adopted. General, the presidency is saying there are plans to bring down his government. Uh, this is connected with the issue of the Chiba girls. How do you find the statement? Well, if uh, the, president, the presidency is obsessed with only one thing and one thing only, and any other thing of concern to Nigeria is secondary, then the presidency will take that position, which would be unfortunate. Now, while the Boko Haram were they, in, were they in existence, they've been in existence for, for years. When I went to my degree, and, and I said to them, when were you in existence? They said they were in existence when I was even in government. How did you deal with that situation while you were in government? Well, they said that when their objective is Sharia. And when I was in government, I was going with, governing, uh, with governance. I did not disturb them with their Sharia. Because Sharia is part of our constitution. If anybody wants to go into Sharia, Good luck to him. Has there been any difference in the situation now with the government's reaction to Sharia? I have not heard of um, the presidency uh, abolishing that uh, law or the religion. No. What happened, according to them, when I, I went to my degree, was that look, the founder, Muhammad Yusuf, was going about his, uh, what his sect believed, good or bad. Um, and then his father-in-law, Fugu, was declared wanted by the police. He went to report himself to the police with his lawyer. The police arrested him and killed him in cold blood. The military raided his house where his son-in-law Muhammad Yusuf was residing. They raised the uh, house to the ground. They arrested uh, Muhammad Yusuf, handed him over to the police and said, look, take him to court. The police killed him in cold blood. His deputy, who was at one time in the government of Borno State, was on his farm. 80 kilometers away from my degree, the police went to arrest him and killed him in cold blood. Then they went to court to ask for compensation for the killing of Fugu, who was not, he had nothing to do with uh, Boko Haram, except that the leader of Boko Haram married his daughter. And they got judgment for a compensation of 100 million naira to be paid. The state government didn't pay it. But the question is the public, and even um, you can see that it's obvious that the issue of the Chibok girls has attracted global condemnation. Yeah. Does the adoption of the Chibok girls, does it justify the stance of the Boko Haram or the insurgents in any way? Why do they ad 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 adopt the, girl, the girls? I sincerely hope that those girls are safe. I sincerely hope that those girls have not been messed up. I sincerely hope that those girls will not be, uh, we will still not be talking about them 10 years from now, that they can be rescued. General, how would you assess uh, federal government's rescue mission and its operation so far in bringing back the missing Chiba girls? I, I will say that after the lethargy or the insensitivity of the early days, I think now everybody is getting woken up to try to do something. We are contending right now with the reports of um, some top military personnel selling out to the uh, insurgents. How do you see that report? I had that, when I was dealing with uh, militants in the Niger Delta, when I call about 20, uh, 40 of them, I say, hey, come and talk to me. The first thing they said to me is that, look, when you are fueling your helicopter to come and look for us in the creek, we get information. 
when your sh ship is being fueled, you want to send the Navy out, we get information. Now, General, from your world of experience, uh, when you have such a situation where some top military hierarchy are selling out, how do you deal with such situation? In the situation of whether it's Boko Haram or militants or OPC, you will have sympathizers. But not just sympathizers. You will have their relations who probably would be in touch with them. Some people are saying the Chibok girls, the missing Chibok girls, uh, some of them are not in Nigeria. Uh, do you have any clue? I won't know. I won't know. I won't know. That, if action had been taken within 24, 48 hours, maybe, yes. But even for me, 72 hours is too late. It's too late. We should bear in mind that the taking almost 300 girls, there's an element of logistics that you need to put in place. Now, it's important we talk about this. Bookmaker, bookmaker has said of as much that Nigeria is at war, uh, implying that the insurgents may not necessarily be Nigerians. Would you allude to that uh, position? Well, the people that I have uh, 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 been able to uh, contact and who acted as a proxy did not say that the leaders are non-Nigerians. Maybe some of the foot soldiers may not be Nigerians. Okay, now let's take a review about on some of the ways the federal government of Nigeria has risen to this uh, dealing with insurgency. The African Security Summit in Paris has attracted a lot of comments. How do you see a situation where we are having a security situation, a security deliberation in Paris? It's unfortunate. There's nothing that Paris achieved that could not be achieved on African soil. It's unfortunate. And um, the, um, at this point now, we're having uh, allies in dealing with insurgency. Uh, people are wary of um, US intelligence coming to support the federal government. What's your stand on this? Of course, when you have a particular problem, the problem should be for you to solve. No. The Americans will not, they can give us information, they can give us intelligence, they will not fight Boko Haram for us. They will not even uh, endanger the life of their own people to rescue the girls for us. They may give us information, they may give us intelligence. So is the British. So is the French. So we must be the one who will be the architect of our own fortune, as we have been the architect of our own misfortune. We did uh, see the, the terrain of the Sambisa forest. And um, what comes to mind is if we are to go in there and take possession, uh, that brings to task an unconventional warfare. Uh, I should be asking if we have a military formation that is well trained in counterterrorism. I, I have been divorced from the military at least seven, year, uh, seven years ago when I ceased to be commander in chief. Um, but in my time, we had a very well-trained army, very well-trained Air Force, very well-trained Navy. Of course, no uh, military in any country can have everything that it will want. But training, yes, and the quality of our officers in that time from what I know, very, very good. What has happened in the intervening years, I cannot say.
Now, we have a bit of a drama now uh, in the statement of the Chief of Defense Staff, uh, Alex Badi, who said they know where the Chiba girls are, but the task is they have to be careful in the way they go about rescuing or attacking the people in the Sambisa hideout. And the federal government of Nigeria said, uh, give a hard knock on that statement. And even we, we read on the, that we had a headline that they, even the U.S. is saying they have no information to that. How do you see this kind of statement at this time in our national life? Maybe the military wants to uh, try a little bit of uh, public relation, uh, maybe. Uh, but this, again, this is not an issue that you will uh, play public relation uh, propaganda with. Um, it's a serious issue. It's an issue that, uh, is that it's like spare in the heart of the uh, parents. And, uh, and uh, whatever statement we make and whatever action we take, um, if we cannot, if it will not really deal with the issue in a way that it will uh, make, uh, we, we bring those girls out safe and secure and make their family uh, happy and will also give every Nigerian a sense of security, then such statement should not be made or, act, or such action should not be taken. Is there a political angle to all this abduction scenario? You, you, you see, again, political angle in what sense? When I was president, the governor of uh, Zamfara decided to, to go for Sharia. And I said, if it's Sharia, it's genuine Sharia, it will survive. If it is political Sharia, it will fizzle out. It fizzled out. Now, if that is the sort of political you are talking about, well, maybe. But one thing that I do know is that Boko Haram said their objective is Sharia. Now, Sharia is not an issue in Nigeria because it's part of our constitution. So, what is the political? My own belief, and I've told you the story they told me, is that a stitch in time, if it had been there, maybe we will not have been where we are. But we must all admit that there was no stitch in time. What's the way forward now? The way forward is let's do everything humanly possible to get the abducted girls released or rescued, safe and secure. And then the government can find a way of dealing with the issue of insurgency. General Lulushek Mabasuja, it's been a wonderful moment. Um, quite an insightful conversation so far, and I really must say a big thank you for making our time to be a part of this conversation on Channels Television. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, I guess we would have to keep our fingers crossed as we all count, hopefully, to when the abducted girls would eventually be released. But the big question, is our government doing enough to stamp out insurgency? Now, do we have enough military formation competent enough to rise to the task of counterterrorism? As we behold another transition in our national life, is there the political will to make a difference in a desperate polity that cries out for redemption? Perhaps a food for thought for you there. Thank you for being a part of this interview on the state of our dear nation. I'm Binga Ashiru. Bye for now.